It's always an honor to stand in this place and speak to you. Today I come to speak to you on behalf of the session of your church and talk for you a little bit and tell you a little bit about what the session has done and is doing to try to get us back together. We've had many meetings and I don't think I've been had any greater honor than to serve as a member of this session at this time. There's been, there's been a lot of talk, a lot of meetings together, and we commissioned uh, Nicole Bryant to form a COVID-19 committee to begin to look at what we could do and what their feelings were about us getting back together. They met many times. It was many of the health care providers that are members of this church that were together, and they laid out a program for us to get back together. I won't go into that now. Those have been published, and you've seen that. We also, as a session, put together a group about bringing us back together, how we do that. And uh, Nancy Jones and Thad McCord chaired that committee. Uh, Barry was the leader of that, and they got together and put together a program of how we could do that. So we met last week to move that forward. We had made a decision as a session that we were ready to reopen. As most of you know, last week things began to spike with COVID-19 in our area. So we said in that meeting, I've never been in a meeting like this where people were so open and honest about how they felt. I'll be quite frank, I'm an old school guy. And uh, my dad always taught me that when the church doors open, you get there. So I would try to do that. So we thought about that and we had discussion. And I'll be honest, I came to that meeting feeling like it was time that we opened the doors and come back. But as I said, this session, being as caring as they are, talked not only to you as members of our church, but to the staff. Folks, we have staff that are vulnerable from an age standpoint. We need to look at that and how we operate that situation. I'm so thankful for the staff that we have and how hard they work. I know you are too, but I just had to publicly say that. So the reopening committee sat down and we decided that through that we would open and have a service in the fellowship hall. What would that look like? I'm gonna describe that to you. We'd have it in the fellowship hall. You'd have to make a reservation to come. We would social distance. You'd probably wear a mask. There would be no donuts and coffee. There would be no Sunday school classes. There would really be no opportunity for fellowship, no nursery, no singing. All the areas of the church would be off limits, except for the restrooms outside the fellowship hall. Folks, does that sound like church to you? Not at First Presbyterian Church Greer. We're a loving church. We believe in hugging one another as we walk out the door. How are we going to stop doing that? It would be tough. It should be tough for this old guy. So would we just be having church for the sake of having church? We listened to various reports that day of our staff, of other members, like I said. And so here we are. What decision do we make? Like I say, I came with an idea of what I wanted to do when I was ready to come back. But then another hat I wear in this church is chairman of your PNC committee. I can tell you our committee have listened to hundreds and hundreds of services. And folks, I can tell you, without prejudice, I can tell you that this church's service is as close to the real thing as you see sitting in here on Sunday when you're in the church. It wouldn't be that way if we met in the fellowship hall. We still have our same order of service. We talked about the fact that we love to hear the singing. And we all can't wait to get together and do that again. But in the environment we were going to do that, we couldn't do it. But we can still be church. Marcia and I love the fact that we can get together on Sunday morning and stand up in our den and go through the order of service and feel like we're right in church. I hope you feel that way too. We want to continue to be that way. We are still church. We have an opportunity through Zoom meetings to have Bible studies and to be together and worship together that way, just not in person. But we want to get back together. So here's some good news for you. We're going to plan a Vesper service. That Vesper service is going to be on July the 19th at 7 o'clock. We will get more details to you about where we're going to do that, but it'll be outside so we can be together. 
You'll probably need to bring chairs. We will have to do some social distancing, but we'll be together and we'll be outside like we want to be together. I think that's so important. So, are we having church just for the sake of meeting? That's another thing that, that we talked about. We are still church and we can still have these services. So what do we tell the folks in Greer? Like I've said before, once from this very pulpit, I made the statement, this church is a focal point to people coming in Greer. We're right on the main highway coming into Greer. What do we do? Folks, we came up with a great slogan, and we're going to put a big banner on the front of our church that says, for the sake of Greer, we will wait. For the sake of Greer, we will wait. We will continue to be church. We will continue to work in our communities. We will continue to do what we need to do. And I urge you, as we go forward and we continue to have these services on Sunday, think about the fact that you're almost inside the sanctuary with the way we do the order of service. I've been privileged to be here today to see that. And there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. But I'm so thankful for this staff and all the folks behind the scenes that helped put this together to make it what it is. So continue to pray for our staff, continue to pray for our church, and continue to pray for our country as we try to get through this COVID-19 pandemic. Thanks be to God for this church and this staff and what it means to me and what I know it means to you.